Hello everyone, welcome to Big Data Thoughts. Today we are going to talk about the top 8 big data trends. So many people have asked me like what are the things that are going on in the market or what is really trending in terms of big data. So today we are going to talk about 8 such things. So let's get started. First of all, when we talk about big data, now big data has been there for quite some time and everybody practically either works or knows about big data. But when, whenever we talk about trends, the first thing that will come up is cloud computing. Uh, with big data coming in, different technologies coming in, cloud computing has also really captured the market because of multiple benefits that it provides. Right? Because there is a trend of storing, processing big data and people are using either Azure or Google or AWS because <coughs> cloud provides that kind of flexibility and scalability which big data processing needs and also because we are talking about petabytes and terabytes of data it is very very difficult to have an on-premise setup where with the growing data need you can easily scale up but when you go for cloud providers any of them it's just a click of a button to scale up and scale down and it is very very cost effective so cloud computing and big data you can say go hand in hand and that is one of the most most important thing to know about and it will really help your big data journey if you know um, things about cloud computing if you know the major cloud providers and the services that they provide more or less you would see that they provide similar services with some nuances here and there so the first thing to catch up on is cloud computing second thing which is trending is <coughs> real time streaming now why because as um, big data has progressed and <coughs> the technologies have enhanced and there is a rise of IoT devices. IoT devices are nothing but, I mean, you must have heard about it, Internet of Things. Every, practically every device these days, like our wearables or our coffee machines or uh, switches, everything is becoming intelligent and there are multiple devices that have uh, capability to send data so with the advent of iot devices real time streaming is important and there are multiple use cases like for example in the medical world doctors can actually monitor a patient real time if they are wearing some kind of variable variables which are sending uh, it can be a wristwatch it can be any other monitor which is sending signals constantly in real time so it's very easy and efficient for doctors to track the progress of the patient, have alerts when their condition is worsening. So with the advent of IoT devices, it has become um, mandatory to have a capability to read data in real time process and derive uh, decisions or take actions in real time. The third thing which people uh, it's not really a technology per se, but this is something that is very, very important. <coughs> the reason being, the data is growing so much. So there is a lot of data which is sensitive, critical, which needs governance. So it data governance as a whole has really picked up. And there's a lot of focus on how do you control access to the data. Because there are so many data lakes being built organizations are moving towards collating data from different sources. So there is a need to ensure that what we are collecting, one, it is of high quality. Second, there is security. Not everybody has access to all data. Even though the data is getting stored in a single place, there is a need. And I, uh, honestly, if you look at the previous scenarios when we had disparate systems spread across, some were having critical data they were highly secure some were having data which is okay to share right but now when we are moving to a world where we have data lake set up where we are bringing in data from multiple places to one location <coughs> the importance of data governance becomes even more critical because you need to ensure that whatever data you are keeping is highly secure encrypted masked and given access um, and it is given access to people uh, we are giving access to people who are authorized to access it so another trending thing in the market is data governance and there are multiple tools to do data governance like cloud providers have their own tools 
to have do auditing of the data lineage of the data providing security each cloud provider has its own set of services but also there are tools <coughs> which help you in data governance so informatica has its own tool and there are multiple such vendors who have specifically a set of tools which will help you to do data governance whether it is data breaks whether it is informatica or it is the cloud providers then comes machine learning <coughs> now this is one topic which everybody must have heard multiple times and why machine learning is becoming important is because ideally uh, there is too much of data and if you want to explicitly <coughs> program everything to do analytics or to derive insights it will become difficult hence machine learning is also growing the need of machine learning is also growing as the data is growing because machine learning will help you to draw insights based on the past behavior it can help you to do predictive analytics it can help you to prevent certain risks or certain failures that are going to happen because the data is huge it it would be really helpful to use machine learning data to train uh, certain machine learning models and use them for future predictions and it has become a very very important tool for big data processing and an integral part of the big data journey okay so machine learning if you go back a decade when big data was really picking up and machine learning people but machine learning has been there for ages but it has really uh, <coughs> like the the journey of uh, big data has progressed so has machine learning because it helps you to is that whole processing that you need to now do with so much of data so machine learning is also very good thing to catch up on and it's a subset of the whole artificial intelligence space now in the next few slides i'm going to talk about things which are related to machine learning but i want to talk about each of them separately because they are a big field in themselves and it is good to you know start exploring each one of them other thing which is really picking up is edge computing <laughs> now if you think about it when we are talking about big data if there is huge amount of data that i have to send from multiple places into a data lake it is definitely going to take time it cannot be like absolutely real time because we are talking about huge amounts of data that data needs to be transferred over the network there will be latency when we are talking about data transfer <coughs> also there is a cost involved when we are sending terabytes of data over the network one is the speed and the latency the time that it takes and also the cost that it takes and it it will be time because first we have to transfer the data then we have to process and then only we can derive certain insights so to remediate that one of the concept that has really picked up is edge computing the, as the name suggests right we are trying to do all of this computing that we usually used to do after collecting the data in a centralized place we are now pushing that computing to the source or pushing the computing near the source so rather than taking all the data over the network into a centralized location what we are trying to do we are trying to do the computing or processing at the source itself and then sending the aggregated data back to the central location so the amount of data generated is huge and this edge computing helps in reducing the data transfer the cost and the latency an example can be let's say you have very high end machines which are used for extracting petroleum right now those machines if you want to do preventive uh, <coughs> measures to detect any kind of failures in those machines those machines are capable of sending uh, data every few seconds like they they have sensors for temperature pressure etc but if i have to collect that data which is gen getting generated every millisecond or second to a centralized location and then cumulate and uh, try to predict failure it is going to take time and sometimes the machines where they are in the sea or somewhere remote they may not even have real good network to do such huge amount of data transfer so then this edge computing would really help so the sensor data that the machines drilling machines are sending can be collected at the uh, machine site itself using edge computing devices <coughs> and we can have those uh, kind of failures predicted so this is just one of the examples 
but edge computing really helps most of the cloud providers would have their own services to do edge computing like for example uh, amazon does provide a snowball device that you can use so initially the snowball device was more about you know transferring data from offline to location to uh, the data center and upload it but now they are come they have come up with smarter versions which has edge computing capabilities at also so this is one more trend which is really picking up it is related to the <coughs> ai ml that we spoke about this is the integration of ai and big data now this is something which is really catching up the reason being analytics on big data was one piece but now people are wanting to combine ai and analytics together like i said AI can help you to do predictive analytics and much more advanced, sophisticated analysis of the uh, huge amount of data that we are getting. It can be NLP, natural language processing. It can be predictive modeling. And there are a number of use cases of doing this predictive modeling. One of them is the one I spoke about, device failure detection. There can be many other use cases like consumer behavior analysis is done. Recommendations are given. These are all uh, use cases where we are churning through a huge amount of data and bringing out insights. So the combination of AI and big data is a very, very uh, <coughs> important and wonderful thing to do. So when we start learning and progressing on the big data journey, it's important to understand big data as a whole, cloud computing, real time streaming, AI ML, and then further once all these concepts are learned, it is important to combine AI and big data. The other thing that you may hear is explainable AI. Now, people have been looking at AI, ML, big data, all of this. But with the increase of use of AI, a lot of AI use cases are being implemented for decision making. So it is important that whatever we are designing or whatever we are building should be explainable. What does that mean? It is usually referred as explainable AI or XAI. That's the acronym. <coughs> it is becoming very, very important because this means that whatever AI models we are building should be transparent and understandable. Because if they are not understandable or uh, if they are not simple enough or transparent enough to understand what is happening, the maintainability becomes difficult and the trust on them or the decisions that those models are making becomes a bit difficult. So it's very important. That's a new uh, terminology that is getting used very much is we are building AI models to <coughs> operate on big data, but those have to be explainable AI that is transparent and easy and understandable so that we can trust them. So that's XAI. And last but not the least is auto ML. Now what is auto ML? This also you would be hearing whenever people are talking about AI ML. It is automated machine learning. This is nothing but a set of techniques that automate the process of applying machine learning. Now machine learning is in itself is a huge field. So people learn different kinds of AI ML um, algorithms. It's not one, just one algorithm. There are a number of algorithms that we can use. So. <coughs> Making a understanding a use case, designing a AI ML algorithm, training it, running it is one part. But more than that, there is a there is a whole process like how do you deploy that model? So one piece is development, understanding the use case, developing it, training it, right? And making sure that the model is accurate. But even after this, we have to deploy this model to multiple environment, environments. We have to retrain it. As in when new data keeps coming, you need to retrain the model. And then you need to maintain this uh, <coughs> model that you have developed. So just like we spoke, speak about DevOps, right? Where we do this whole end-to-end -end deplo development, deploy development, testing, then deployment, maintenance. Similarly, when we build an AI ML model, it has to have a capability that we build that model, deploy that model, and based on the changes in data, retrain that model and keep on going, like doing the same process over and over again. So that whole process is auto ML, which is designed 
to make this whole process of building deploying machine learning models more easier and accessible to multiple users. So auto ML, explainable AI, machine learning, all of these are kind of interrelated to each other and it, these are very very important terms for someone to know if they want to progress in this big data field. So I hope this whole quick snapshot of the different eight topics that are trending would help you to just get some pointers and then get started on your journey and go deeper into each of these. And maybe in the subsequent videos, I'll try to cover each of these topics in a bit more detail with use cases. So please like, share and subscribe to the channel uh, to get more interesting videos. Thank you so much.